You see that fastener with the spring on it way down in the corner there? I'm not going to be able to get a socket or a ratchet in underneath it. So I'm going to have to work with my open end wrench to try and get it. I could probably get it with the box in, but I'm going to try to get it with this open end wrench. This open end wrench has a slight offset, if you notice, 15 degrees off to the left. And what that is for is if I can reach in there and get that fastener, you see that I can't quite get it. I can get it here and turn it. But then when I come back to this position again, I can't get the wrench on it. But if I flip the wrench over, now I can get it and I can give it another turn. So I can actually use the wrench and flip the wrench back and forth. And that allows me to keep being able to grab the fastener and turn it. And that is the pull point of the 15 degree offset. Now there's a similar thing with the box end. There is 15 degree offset, so let's see if I can get it with the box end. I can just barely get it with the box stretch. So that's why you have all of those points, and that's why you have the offset 15 degrees on the open end wrench. Adjustable wrenches are not a replacement for open end wrenches. No. But when you are there, you want to make sure that you turn it in the proper direction with the fixed jaw. So there's a lot of times where an adjustable wrench can be very handy and very convenient, but um, it's actually best practice to use a proper torque wrench like this. So these torque wrenches have two different directions. They're loosening and tightening, although it's not recommended to torque, or sorry, to loosen with a torque wrench. You just want to tighten fasteners with a torque wrench. Um, I always kind of imagine that that reverse was for left-handed threads, which is uh, possible to, to find from time to time. So um, how this works is uh, we're going to torque this fastener right here. This is a, a half-inch fastener. If you're ever unsure and want to reference the size, a three-quarter inch socket fits on this head. So whatever the size socket is, um, the socket size is 1.5 times the diameter of the threads, the, the major diameter of the threads. So that would be a half inch times 1.5 is three-quarter. So I'm going to torque this half-inch fastener, and I looked it up on my chart, and it's 76 foot-pounds. So what we'll do is take this torque wrench and I'll unlock it and then you can see on here there is increments and it's almost like a micrometer for every turn or revolution that I turn off the handle I get an increase of 25 foot-pounds so I'll start it off at 50 and I'm right on the increment there and I'm gonna go up to 76 so that's one full turn that gets me to 75 and then i'm just going to go a crack more and that should be 76 and then i'm going to lock this handle in position now my torque wrench is set i'll put the half inch drive socket on the half inch drive and then when i go to torque this um, this has already been torqued and it should be tight but I want to make it in one motion. So I'm going to bring things up snug and then I'm going to try to turn it and keep the torque wrench moving until it clicks. Once it clicks, it's been torqued. Now, a lot of people will give it a second, but I like to just do it once because if you do it twice, sometimes you can torque it a little bit. Better. Okay, so now we've got our torque multiplier out here and I've got it attached to the 7 8 fasteners with a 1 and 5 16 socket. Um, this is a six to one torque multiplier, meaning that um, if I, this torque wrench that I have applied here, if I push on this with 100 foot pounds, it's gonna react against this arm and apply 600 foot pounds of torque to this fastener. So essentially inside of the head here is a planetary gearbox. And when I torque this, for every 60 degrees that I move the torque wrench 
I get a change of six or 10 degrees for this. So it's a six to one amplification of force. Um, so normally you would use something on this if there was a pipe coming out of here and this reaction arm would set up against the pipe that was running here. But I just have a blank on here for right now. I don't really have a lot of things in the shop that I can use this on uh, to, to show this properly. So when you set up these um, torque multipliers, you need something that when I, when I torque this, this reaction arm needs to hold off against something. So what I've done here is I've just put a block here. And then I set my torque wrench to one sixth the specified torque of this bolt. And then when I go to torque down on this, you can see that as I push down, this reaction arm is pushing down on my dunnage or my block of wood here. Now this isn't the best way to do this. I'm just trying to show that the torque range moves down in one direction and then we get a, uh, a reaction in the opposite direction. Make sure that this is secured and safe and then you can actually apply quite a bit of uh, force on this with uh, very little ease. So if there's a lot of bolts that you have to do and you can't get an impact gun in and you can't quite get the torque that you require, you can turn this. And so it would take me six full revolutions with the torque wrench to get one revolution with that on that fastener. So it just a way of multiplying and adding force onto something. And again, using a block of wood like that is not the best way to do it. You'd want to block something up or, or brace it uh, in a more appropriate way, but and just kind of just showing the basic demonstration of how this all works. Here we have a flathead screwdriver that has been ground and uh, the profile changed on it. It has kind of a con con vex shape to it. We want to get away from that. We actually want to make it kind of concave so that the blade end can sit right down in the slot of the fastener that we're trying to torque down. So I'll show you the way to sharpen the screwdriver. At the end, we should have a nice straight flat surface. There should be two concave sides and uh, it should be equal and symmetrical on both sides.
there you have it. It's got a nice convex shape to it. Cleaned the sides up and made sure that the end was nice and square. Now we're going to sharpen a cold chisel. So the, the bevel and the angle on this is quite beaten up. We lost the edge, it's uh, damaged. Uh, there's a lot of facets on here. And then also on the blunt end, you can see that it's starting to mushroom. So we're going to clean this one up. First, I'm going to start by grinding in the angle of the bevel. It's really important when you're, hard, when you're sharpening these to make sure that the tip doesn't get too warm and too hot and go blue on you. So we're going to make sure that we're cooling this off as we go. So you can see that I've got a nice clean edge with the ever, ever so slight crown to the chisel edge and both sides are equal. It's symmetrical in both directions, this way and this way. And that's what a proper old chisel should look like. <clears throat> okay, here we have a center punch and a prick punch. Prick punch is 30 to 60 degrees, center punch is 90 degrees. So as you can see, this one has lost its hardness or it's been driven against something harder than the actual metal of the punch itself. This one here has kind of worn out and dulled down. So we are going to dress these up. I'll show you how to grind these. 